Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome to our first A World Betrayed DLC Let's Play. And after the voting, uh, Yen Baihu has won the poll, and he will be our first faction to be played uh, with A World Betrayed. So Yen Baihu once again is the White Tiger, and uh, he is the bandit faction down south uh, that starts the game in 194. Uh, his starting situation is easy. Um, I guess in the beginning, because there's no other major factions around you, you can just expand and utilize the unique bandit playstyle uh, to grow your, uh, I guess, empire or uh, bandit camp uh, in the south alone uh, before Sun Tzu makes his way down there. Uh, he's a sentinel character. He enables stock for uh, his entire faction, which is pretty amazing. Because stock is, uh, allows you to remain hidden as you travel around the map despite the terrain so you can uh, hide your units get some very interesting battles out uh, looking forward to deviate from my uh, usual uh, spear wall plus range compositions especially with a lot of the nerfs so we'll have fun experimenting as we get used to the bandit playstyle we also get five percent replenishment faction wide uh, which is going to be very helpful at all times and our faction specialization is the white tiger confederation uh, this is something that boosts us um, for each ally or coalition member that we have and it will decrease the research time for the bandit network which is the new reform tree uh, or reform network or map whatever you want to call it for the bandit factions and it also reduces recruitment costs for non-bandit units because for those of you who are not familiar uh, as you expand on the bandit network uh, you make connections with the rest of the map uh, to acquire uh, units from other factions. So those are considered non-bandit uh, units and those recruitment costs will go down as you gain your confederation specialization. Now as a bandit uh, you will have access to all the bandit mechanics and we'll talk about all these in game because bandits are new uh, with this patch. Although we talked about it plenty in our preview videos uh, in case you're joining us for the first time uh, we'll be reviewing those as well. So our playstyle focus is coalition building and uh, tribal networks. Uh, tribal network is one branch of the bandit network and that's the branch that it's the green branch and it's the branch that we have extra bonuses for. So our unique features are the white tiger warriors. These are assault infantries available for all characters at rank 1 uh, but we can't really spam these because you will need uh, recruitment slots. So there's like available number of recruitment depending on how your bandit network is going and it's important to uh, get the right uh, reforms to kind of enable more of these units. Uh, these are uh, basically two-handed axe units with really, really good splash attack and good against shield because they're axe unit. And uh, our second unit is the White Tiger Raiders. Uh, these are also available to all character level 1, but will probably also be restricted by number of recruitment slots. Uh, these are spear and bow infantry. Uh, so with stock and snipe potentially available, you can have these guys hide somewhere on the map, uh, shoot all their arrows, and which could be poison arrows because poison arrow now replaces fire arrows for the bandit faction uh, as the skill tree is modified uh, to on all enemy units. And then after you finish shooting, you charge in with your spear, uh, well hidden because you have stock, and it's a very very interesting playstyle. So we can definitely look forward to uh, using them in battle as well. Our unique building is a unique minor settlement option. A minor settlement option is something new. Uh, you can be built alongside each county, each specialty county in the game. And the Shan Yue camp, which is featured here, is unique to Yan Bai Hu. Uh, Shan Yue, uh, although the term originate from the name Yue, which is a minority uh, ethnic group uh, in the southern China area, uh, Shan Yue eventually became a collective term for all sorts of bandits or people who uh, live in the mountains and avoid paying taxes. Uh, so uh, they kind of get clumped together whether you are the minority group or you are Han ethnic group. Uh, as long as you're you know, not paying taxes and being bandits in the mountains. And the mountains is key because Shan means mountains. Uh, you are called Shan Yue. And we have mercenary treaties. So mercenary treaties or mercenary contract are something new that comes with the game. Uh, basically, you can offer your service as bandits uh, to any of the lords on the map to fight a common enemy, uh, enter into a 20-turn alliance, a temporary alliance, where you gain rewards 
for helping them kill a shared enemy, and you can also sell them the land you conquer uh, to gain extra points. Uh, that's called Fame and Fortune. Uh, we'll be definitely utilizing this a lot in the campaign, uh, so we definitely get to see it then. Uh, noteworthy characters, we have our younger brother, uh, Yan, Yu, uh, Yan Yu, I believe is the Chinese character, and he's the tiger cub. Uh, he's a champion. Uh, he'll be our healer. <laughs> There's a lot of really nice healing skills uh, with the champion class. So with that said, we're going to jump into game here. Uh, we're going to be doing this on Legendary Legendary 40 Minutes. So see you guys in the game. Shangu 虽然大王与孙策之间还有刘瑶相隔必将闻风丧胆。Alrighty, so establish your power. Even here, far from the capital, chaos is spreading. Yan Bai Hu, your lands are threatened by ambitious warlords. Their greed cannot go unpunished. Those who call the South home and others around the land sympathetic to your cause must now rally to defend a way of life in danger of vanishing forever. Yes, the way of life of not paying taxes is uh, endangering to disappear. And the tiger claims his land, so our first is to claim the Puyang, uh, Puyang Weapon Craftsman, which stands right in front of us. And there's yellow turbans controlling it. And our first enemy, if we look on the map real quick, is just yellow turban rebellions, uh, which is quite simple. Uh, we get along fine with everyone else in the south. Um, Matter of fact, some of them like us more than others. Um, we'll talk about these factions in terms of what type of their story behind their faction is later on. Um, but first, uh, let's talk about ourselves. We are uh, we didn't grow up being bandits. We weren't poor. Uh, we came from a pretty big clan in the Wu Commandery, which is what the game calls Jian Ye. And we started out over here. That's where we kind of grew up. There's a lot of mountain ranges over here. And uh, eventually we became kind of this... Uh, thug-like figure uh, in town with uh, gathered up a lot of militia and followers uh, to a point where we numbered about 10,000 strong and we kind of you know just decided that we were going to be bandits and not pay taxes and uh, kind of joined into the mountains here called Bai Hu Shan which is White Tiger Mountain and that's when we changed our name from Yan Hu to Yan Bai Hu uh, not very different um, just missing the term white, uh, the uh, character in the middle there. And uh, that's pretty much our nickname going forward, the White Tiger of Jiangdong. Um, and uh, we got along with many of the factions around us. Wang Long and us uh, shared common enemy. Uh, pretty much when Sun Ce came down south, everyone grouped together. And that's why we have sort of a coalition style uh, faction bonus. Because we were thrusted into the leadership role to face off against him. Uh, but we didn't do so hot in history, so hopefully we'll do much better here. Uh, it will take eight coalitions to reach the max tier. Uh, each of these dot is one coalition, and uh, these are each tiers. So if we get one, we get the first tier called Ming, or the White Tiger Bond. Uh, Ming means life or fate, and uh, it gives discounts, right? Discount to cost for the four different types of reforms, as well as discount of recruiting uh, non-bandit units. And the uh, discount level changes a little bit depending on the type of reform. Uh, as you can see, the most is from the tribes and tradition, which is the green color ones in the reform map. And then these stats go up 
uh, as we get more. So two more coalitions. At three, we get Yong, which is brave, uh, which is called White Tiger Accord. And then two more, we get uh, Sheng, which is ascended, and it's called the White Tiger Union. And these just, uh, it's its linear, right? It's 5, 5%, 10%, 15%, 2%, 4%, 6%. It's all linear here. And uh, finally, if we get three more, we get Hu, which is uh, tiger, and it's called White Tiger Empire. And uh, this this tier is no longer linear. Uh, it doubles uh, instead of just one one time. So from 15 to 25 percent, uh, it's all nice even numbers: 15 percent, 20 percent, 10 percent, 25 percent, and 20 percent recruitment cost for all non-banded units. And speaking of these non-banded units and reform, uh, we can take a look at the banded network, which is the new reform tree for the banded faction. So first thing to note, we do start with four reforms unlocked already. And this one right here is in the county where we own some territory. So as long as you own some territory, the uh, county will be shaded. And you can see you get 200% research rate. Uh, you just need one county to get this bonus. And um, that means you just basically research things um, three times as fast. Uh, over here, if you look at the neighboring ones, uh, basically, if you have one unlocked, all the neighboring branches are unlocked. So you can start researching out this way. Uh, they're color coded. The red ones are the ones most available on the map. They're called Outlaws and Outcast. Uh, these are basically just different type of units you can recruit. Now, all of these comes with unit. And all of these come with uh, a number. So for example here, these are uh, the purple ones called Faith and Folly. So they tend to be yellow turban units. They tend to be uh, focused on Taoist uh, principles. So here's a scholar of the eight immortals of Huainan. Uh, I'll be coming out with a series of guides next week covering this entire tree, breaking them down, talking about each one's lore. Uh, so we'll cover the details then. But purple ones have a few things in common. They will always reduce your corruption and they will always provide you some sort of yellow turban units. Uh, so this one provides you scholar warriors, but as you can see, you only get two of them means you can only recruit two into your faction after you get this. If you want more, you have to look for uh, more reforms that will provide you similar unit. So for example here, the Wudang clan uh, in a region where the Wudang mountain is, which is a Taoist um, spiritual mountain, you get one more scholar warrior. So that's kind of how the system works. And the green ones are what's called tribes and tradition, and that's the kind of one we focus on. Um, these are uh, mainly focused on bandit units and tribal units like uh, the Yue tribemen, so minority group and uh, ethnic groups. So you have all the Senbei uh, cavalry, Xionu cavalry, Tiang cavalry. These are all considered to be tribes and traditions. And lastly, the well, yeah, blue ones are the ones we haven't talked about. Blue ones are clandestine and corrupt. These are government officials that are corrupt. Uh, so here we have spear guards. So you get traditional Han units, uh, repeating crossbowmen, and so on. All right. So that's how it's divided up. And you can kind of pick and choose how you want to expand your faction on the map to assist your uh, research. Or you can just uh, decide how to expand on the research tree to unlock more. Uh, they will take different amount of turns depending on um, how much territory you hold. Uh, so for us... Um, I think I think I want to go something with a more bandit focus. So here is one of our uh, Yue Remnant Warriors. Uh, these are very cool looking units and we get extra loot. I'm just not sure which one's the best right now. Let me think. Upkeep for new spy, spy positions and sword guards. Plus one extra army. There's a lot of recruitment discount for bandit factions too. Okay, maybe shot cavalry. Maybe we want some cavalry available, even if it's one unit. Hmm. Plus four satisfaction for vanguards. All right, satisfaction is also an issue. This is plus four satisfaction for everyone. So maybe we want these. Population growth is also really good. And character experience. So I think I convinced myself to grab this. Um, yeah, why not? Okay, so back to the game. Uh, we can 
first check out the items we got we got a farm manager we got a military expert not too bad and uh, if we look at our roster uh, we have us our brother now we have a unique tree here so even though bandits in general got unique skills on the tree so these are the new skills they have different looks and they also provide you no stats uh, usually ones provide you know some sort of mixed stat plus a expertise these don't give any stats at all um, it kind of hurt us a little bit and um, especially if you're looking for administrators and such but the good thing is you can recruit regular Han generals as well so if you want generals with those traditional skill tree stats uh, and tra traditional skill trees to become your underlings which is the bandit version of administrators you can definitely do that uh, but you do get awesome abilities so for example here this enables poison arrow on your own retinue. This is poison volley, which is basically a buffed version of hail of arrows. Uh, you do less, um, you, you you do the same uh, animation of hail of arrows, but you poison anything that you hit, and they will continuously tick down with damage uh, for um, over 60 seconds. It's really insane, and not only is it available on Yan Baihu, you think maybe your leader has it. And you know, special thing about him. No, uh, come into your recruitment pool. Uh, there's two generals you can recruit on turn one. You have uh, Cheng Yu over here, and you have uh, Tuo Ba Min Xiu, and she is just a generic uh, sentinel for a bandit with some new background names called Fugitive Officer. Minus 10% recruitment cost for the army. Uh, pretty neat, right? So we recruit her. Class is a thousand gold. Yep, but let's look at her. Look at that. All sentinels of bandit backgrounds have poison volley. That's insane. Uh, obviously, she will have the regular sentinel uh, skills for the rest of her tree. Yet by whose special skill is over here because he absorbs another portion of the bandit skill tree from the um, strategist and he gains stalker, which is usually a skill available for um, bandit strategist. It enables snipe for a group of units around you if you're in the forest. Um, snipe basically allows you to fire without revealing yourself. So that's also pretty neat. Uh, but poison arrow is definitely something we are going to be spamming in this game, or poison volley, and poison arrows as well on our red news. Um, let's see, we do start out with a few. We start out with two bows, interesting. Okay, we are gonna go with this guy do we have any horses no not really our brother can carry the weapon um he can just get some stats for now there we go oh yes the champion unique skill is called mending uh, also four uses per battle heals your general that you use it on it's a small heal but more importantly it gives them 50% armor and 50% melee evasion. So that's pretty insane too. Uh, if you're a commander, your unique one's also on the right side here. Uh, into the Breach, which is a uh, area buff for your units. Gives them 50% melee charge bonus, so for melee units, and also 50 morale, uh, which is huge. Consider how they nerfed morale to the ground uh, for a lot of other skills. So for example, some of the old ones which he doesn't have anymore because he's not a, oh there we go there's one for example mobility it used to be plus 10 morale when attacking they nerfed this all the way down to plus two because they want your militia units to be weak um, so that's kind of how things are all right so that's everything uh, but before we start battling we're going to enter into a couple of negotiations uh, we start out well hold on we start out the game as outlaw so we're kind of one tier above bandits so we do have available underlings. Uh, underlings are the new um, bandit administrators. The bonus they provide is 10% to all sources rather than 15% income to all sources. They give you uh, commanders minus 20% corruption instead of minus 30%, but it increases neighboring commanders' corruption by 10%. Now, although this seems kind of neat and make some sense, it's actually a big nerf because uh, the AI doesn't really care about corruption. Uh, they're, everything's so cheap for AI because of the you know difficulty uh, slider. It gives them cheap unit, cheap buildings, 
uh, that 10% corruption is really not going to hurt them. Um, and you're suffering from minus uh, 10% yourself, even though you do get a lot of faction-wide uh, corruption reduction from your uh, reform tree. Uh, so we can definitely look into uh, putting someone as our administrator after we conquer our first territory. Uh, but first, we need to talk about diplomacy. Because we have mercenary contract, don't waste any opportunity that you have uh, when you can use mercenary contract. What I mean by this is, let's say we are fighting yellow turbans. We know we're fighting yellow turbans. So look at who else is fighting yellow turbans and check with them to see if anyone is willing to pay us to fight the yellow turbans for them. So the situation here is because these four flags are all vassals, we can only talk to the vassal master about um, fighting the yellow turbans. So for example, if we try to talk about them for a mercenary contract, we can't because they are a vassal. But if we talk to the vassal master, we can offer him a mercenary assistance, right? We pick the yellow turbans and he's willing to pay us 5.1 to help them take down yellow turbans. Uh, so we can now offer uh, a lot of things. So obviously turn one, you kind of want to look at the items. Ooh. Okay, uh, nothing super good. I mean, these are nice, but I don't need them. Um, the value of silver weapons and armors dropped a lot. Not value in the game, but like wh whether you need to go for them because the new forge building allow you to get them anyways. Um, the one thing you need to note here, if you have the opportunity to get money per turn, do it. Because all sort of money per turn deals during uh, mercenary contract is 20 turns instead of 10 turns uh, because the contract itself is also 20 turns so you can maximize uh, the amount of money you get from these contract if you get money per turn and you can even sweeten the deal a little bit if you want to get more um, he doesn't want to do that and that's fine he has too big of a, too many enemies I don't want to get messed up with him either Okay, I think this is good. And yeah, we're just going to get this deal done. So there's a lot of cool things with Mercenary Contract that maybe we can see in this uh, Let's Play. Uh, so first of all, we get a mission to destroy one of their armies. We get a thousand gold back. That can pay for the new recruit we did. Uh, you have 20 turns of Alliance. Uh, every, every turn, it's a 4-point DK to Fame of Fortune. And if you ever drop to zero before the turn is up, you gain a huge diplomatic penalty with every faction on the map. Uh, don't do that. Uh, unless unless you're really desperate for money and you want to sell a deal that you know you can't complete. Uh, but you just have to maintain, right? If you're at the lowest tier, you get no reward but no penalty. If you're in the middle tier, you have a chance for additional reward, which comes in the form of money or items. And if you go higher, you have better chance of generating those events that give you reward and also gain morale and finally highest one you get even uh, more chance for greater rewards and also morale faction wide so we'll definitely be trying our best to uh, gather up points here um, I think that's it let's start the battle so they are getting reinforcements which is fine uh, it would be a fun fight Let's jump in here. Alrighty, so we are here in the battle. Um, what we're going to do here is a few things. Let's first look at some of our units. Uh, these are nice and pretty units here. Um, first we have Bandit Warriors. These guys have an axe and a tray. Uh, some has a Z and an axe. Some has... What is that? Oh, that's also a Z with some bell on it. Yeah, pretty nice looking group. And if we look at these Yue Remnants Warriors. So these are supposed to be a minority tribe. And they look pretty decked out. <laughs> okay. And then we have Yue Tribemen, which is not very heavily armored. And then we have these called Bandit Gains. Uh, little Shield. Still 55% range block chance despite the Little Shield and Spear. Uh, so pretty good units all around. What we're going to do with our deployment is that we're going to be hiding them in the forest. Uh, they have guerrilla deployment. That's fine. We're going to utilize our generals. 
taking casualties will hurt our loot, which is another bandit mechanic. And we also have a really great general who has guerrilla deployment. So we can actually do a lot of fun things here. So we're going to hide off to the side where their reinforcements coming in. And we're going to start battle. And we're going to watch their reinforcements show up. No rush. Uh, we do have uh, stock, so we can hide even in open field. They just can't see us until we do something. We're going to watch them all group up, group, group up in a straight line. And we're going to fire our volley straight down. Uh, doing the most poison damage across the board. Right, we'll give them some time to lie up. Oh, they saw us. We're not dueling. Right, let's do one here. Oh, we, I didn't want to move him. I, I thought I was going to do it before he fired. So we wasted a shot. Oops. Uh, but it's fine. We will have, we'll be okay with just three shots. So we're hidden again. Also not a great shot, but you can see the health start taking down right after. I'll find an area from here to shoot the next one. We're basically going to unload all our shots first before we continue. Let's walk up. They see us? Why are they moving out? It's okay, we'll outrun the cavalry right after. Got the four shots down, let's run. They might beat us. No, they, they won't beat us. They're 75 speed. We can outrun them if we just keep running. And if we really need to, we can just enter into a duel. But I don't think so. We outrun them. Okay, we're good. Alright, we have one more volley. Already wrecking some of their units. We should probably prepare our line for the fight. We'll hide the spear at the edge of the forest. Uh, how do we how do we get it? Maybe this angle is better. Right at the edge, so they run into us. We'll hide these guys right behind. All right, bring the cavalry back. You know, I was thinking we could almost play this campaign without siege weapons. What do you guys think about that? To punish my range habits, that we play one without siege weapons. But we'll be doing a lot of poison volley. We gotta give ourselves something. Because technically as bandits, we don't need to fight uh, inside commanderies, like settlements. So we can technically... We're invisible again, by the way. Uh, we can technically... Never siege, so we technically don't need siege weapons. Alright, that's it. Run back, run back. Oh, uh, they got us. Brother! Uh, yeah, sure. We'll let our brother have some fun. He's a champion. He should duel. You can also heal yourself to buff yourself. 
We'll fire some arrows. Hide back in here. I would love it if they charge us. I'm gonna hide these guys off to the side. Seems like we might not get an angle. Oh, by the way, heal yourself. There you go. With extra armor and melee evasion. Alright, 83 armor, 71 melee evasion. Oh, they ran into it. Good, good. Steady. Alright, they're done. Steady. Brace, brace, brace. Alright, there's infantry coming from this side. We'll, we'll hammer them. Go out. Kill these. Pull back. Uh, sword, please. Brother, how are you doing? Still fine. Well, look at him. He has a very unique... And then we're going to launch these guys forward. Try not to take casualties, but... Cavalry is tough. Alright, so... Let's look at our brother. Uh, he was known as a really good warrior. But... Didn't turn out very well for him as Sun Tzu just executed him during a ne negotiation after finding out he wasn't so brave after all. He has a very interesting look. Um, if you look here, he has here like a goad, a gourd. I think that's what it's called in English. It's called a hulu in Chinese. Uh, basically, it's a you know vegetable plant, right? Kind of like a melon. And after it dries off and the interior is carved out, uh, they used to carry liquor. So if you've seen a lot of the old like drunken fist type movies, uh, they would drink out of this. Heal yourself. There we go. Execute him. There we go. Ooh. And I think we won everywhere else too. Yep. Pretty neat. There's our first battle. Uh, we probably want to chase down everyone because how much casualty we inflict is how much fame and fortune we get. So, a little chasing never hurt anyone. It'd be quick. And I think their chasing is done too. So he stopped moving. So it's just whatever unit he needs to kill here. And then we'll be done with the round. Yes? No? Oh my god, there's still units on the map. Chase them! Who are they? Oh, the other Yellow Turban Warriors. Okay, yeah, so let's talk about a little bit of lore. So, Sun Tzu comes into the south. We get thrusted up to attack him. And uh, our brother goes to negotiate peace because we're scared of Sun Tzu. And during that meeting... Uh, Sun Tzu flung a sword into his seat and he kind of jumped at it, flinched, and then Sun Tzu kind of figured it out he's not really as brave as rumors are and then just had him executed on the spot and brought the head back to us and then we became really afraid and just ran. Um, it's a pretty sad historical look at us, but we'll do better. Alrighty. Alright, so if you do the math real quick, you see how they lost 602, right? But we killed what? Uh, 10 here, 77, 87, uh, 107, uh, 339, right? So technically we killed 339, so the rest are all poison arrow kills. That's how good poison volley is, right? So... Definitely something to consider. Uh, just try to hit it into the enemy formation so that all the units get poisoned because they start ticking down as long as they're touched. And we get 14 points of fame and fortune. We capture the enemy general. He doesn't have any item with him, so we're just going to let him go. So here we can either get loot. Uh, we can see our loot level here. We're currently at 60. Uh, we'll talk about loot very soon. 
we can get income or we can get replenishment. So in this situation, I'd rather just get loot. Get an extra thousand gold. And we still have movement to take down this uh, weapons craftsman here. Uh, so we're just going to do that real quick. This is our loot level. So when you're at full loot, you lose um, campaign movement, but you gain prestige. When you're at low loot, uh, no loot, your units start attritioning just like military supplies, uh, but they will fight better and you'll move faster. You can kind of balance this by either uh, raiding in enemy territory, uh, which will cause the falling effects. You uh, make the region lose reserve, make them lose public order. Uh, it'll cost you 25% campaign movement range to do this. It'll make you tired when you go into battle, uh, but it will increase 25 loot. If you have a lot of loot and you want to go down a little bit of loot uh, because you want to move faster or you want to replenish your units, uh, only it works when you're at friendly territories for replenishment units. And also, you should only do this in friendly territory because you're giving the local commander 20 reserve, 20% 20 food from banditry, and 20% income from banditry. So banditry income and banditry food are two different uh, income and food type unique to bandit factions, and it will cost you 45 loot. So this is something you have to balance. Uh, but first, we're just going to continue taking the Weapon Craftsmen. Uh, they still have 300 men left. We're going to be fighting these manually just to be efficient. Also, I'm going to kind of get myself practice using Poison Volleys. Uh, we did a pretty poor job with that first one that we cancelled. So, bear with me. Let's jump into battle here. Alrighty, uh, we're loaded up in here. Um, we're just going to showcase them for the first episode in the future. If we have something like kind of boring like this, we're just going to... Let me fight it and cut it out. Uh, once again, we're going to use the forest here. Mm, you kind of want to leave them on the edge, right? That's when the enemy cavalry is most likely to run into you. Because they just enter the forest and they bump into you. That's how they get killed. And then we just cover one flank to make sure we don't get flanked. That's about it. And these guys can just hide behind. I don't think we need them. Uh, we're going to hide our brother in the back. If some generals are injured, let's say we come into battle a little injured, you always have four heal to use, so something you could just spam in the beginning. You just give him some heal. Right, why not? And then he can just march out. And then after post-battle, you don't have to end it right away. You can use up all your cooldowns just to heal all your general back up. A lot of different ways you can play this. Uh, we probably should have gorilla deployed him a little farther ahead. To wherever the enemy is, but we can go find them. <laughs> this is the blacksmith of the weapon craftsman. Look at that. <laughs> A lot of stone lions. Interesting. Alright, let's find their units. This is a pretty, pretty map. Never really fought one of these maps. Um, they don't see us, we don't see them. How funny. Where are they? Behind this forest? In the forest? Watch us bump into a big group. Uh, uh, bump into a big group, like what we said. Okay. Let's get our first... Oh, we can't really get our first volley off. But they can't see us. Like, after they break distance, they can't see us. Right. We want to get a little bit of contact. We don't, need to, we don't need to see everyone. We just need to see one unit. So we can fire off our volley at them. Come on. There we go, there we go, there we go. Uh, we might not have enough time, but I'm not going to cancel it myself. Okay. I want to lure them out a little bit. Any chance we can get some peace in quiet time? Yes, no. Not going to cancel. Good, good. Leaving us alone. Okay, why did we hit that one? I thought I'd aim over here. But it's fine. You can pull out a little bit. They can't catch us. They're 75 speed. Wearing too much armor. That's why lightly armor units are going to be really nice. Look at them ticking away. 
from the poison. All these just got scratched. These didn't get touched. These are all dying. Alright. We want to an angle where we can hit multiple ones. Right, they're coming out. Hold on, no rush. We want a decent angle here. Let's say pull some distance. Let's say we charge at that one. We can still kill you with our swords. We have a very nice dual wielding sword here. The White Tiger Claws. Uh, increase melee damage, increase uh, uh, expertise, increase uh, instinct. Ah, they're all routing. Brother, come help us, Chase. Heal yourself. Alright, that's it. That's, uh, that's the battle here. We're going to cut it out here. See you guys at the end. Alrighty. So we actually didn't need to chase because it's a garrison fight, so all of them are going to die anyways. The chasing only gives the experience directly on the general, right? Because they get the kill or else it just be divided evenly. And we can choose to gift it to our mercenary lord. Anytime we capture a settlement part of the contract, we can gift it. We get fame and fortune, we get income, we get loot. Um, but this is a weapon craftsman we're talking about, so no deal. We're taking it. Alright, so we get support of the people, which gives us public order and faction-wide support. Sure, faction support, which helps the uh, public order balance. The public order punishment for us is also different. Um, I'll explain that a little bit later. Want us to upgrade or construct a building and seem to a large town? Okay. So for each of the county, right, uh, if we convert it to bandit versions of it, they're called bandit fortresses, you can gain access to a minor settlement on the side. So here we're obviously going to convert it over. Uh, the basic effect of the original building is still intact. We'll still be producing weapons. You get a very nice garrison, right? You get a full stack, two stack, and better two stack uh, as you level it up. You get other effects like banditry income. Uh, reserve and uh, use of pre-battle deployables and prestige. So we're going to try to play a very bandit-like game where we only go for counties and we don't go for um, uh, major settlements. So we'll leave the towns to the regular factions and we're just going to try to grab all of these counties. And we can get prestige from these counties so they'll be fine. Uh, so copper mine, here we go, gives you minus 9% uh, Corruption reduction to adjacent commanderies, which includes yourself. And Iron Mine gives you discount to sword and shield units. Each of them have a different bonus. Uh, obviously, we'll be doing new uh, bandit uh, commandery guides, uh, mainly focused on the new bandit buildings that's in the settlement and also on all the different counties. There's tons of guides that need to be made, and we'll get to it eventually. And these are the minor uh, county buildings. Usually, there's only four. We have a faction unique one here in the Shine Yet camp which discounts the tribe and traditions, uh, which is the green um, reforms a bit more, and also gives you um, available recruitment slot of the Yue tribalmen. So maybe one additional unit here, right? Plus one of the spear, uh, plus two of the spear, plus one of the warrior. And so that's how we can recruit more of them. And we have uh, food production as part of it, banditry food. So the scale for the... Um, uh, when you do s share the spoils, that's what you boost. Uh, Mustering Ground helps you with a redeployment cost discount. It gives you a little prestige and uh, drops adjacent commanderies public order. Also gives you replenishment. So pretty good early on for um, when you're fighting. And these stack. So if you build like three in each of these counties, then you have plus 30% replenishment. Uh, pretty insane. Uh, these preparation uh, camps gives you research rate which is another way you can reduce the cost of your uh, research speed and also gives your spy. So this one I don't think I'm going to go for very heavily because um, we already have a me mechanic to reduce research time. Um, food tent gives population growth in local county, uh, public order and loot. This one I also feel is quite useless. Uh, even though population growth is great, I just feel like this is not what we want as bandits. Um, public order will give other effects like um, rec recruitment and stuff um, if you're, it's very positive or very negative uh, for bandits it's not entirely the same as population loss 
uh, for regular factions. So in a sense, we don't really need to push our population, especially if we're not going for these towns. So the max population here for each of these are only 550k, um, 500k? Yeah, 500k. So it's not like we're going to ever get to like super high population. Um, so maybe it's not what I'm going for as a bandit. Uh, Black Market, however, is a great building. Extra income and extra income boost. Um, very simple building as well. So definitely be converting this. They want us to build something here. So here is a minor settlement slot, uh, as you can see, and the lumberyard. Lumberyard gives upkeep for uh, the bamboo ones, give upkeep for range units. The uh, lumber ones in the north. So bamboo is in the south, lumber is in the north for lumber yards. The lumber ones give spear unit discount, I believe. Um, so they're a little different and they all stack. So they're all pretty good. Um, hmm. We'll be definitely looking to... So they want us to build something. So I guess we will. Currently we're talking about peasantry, food... Uh, there's no county income anymore. All county income will be banditry income. So most of these buildings don't scale. Uh, the mil new military for uh, forge is basically what we kind of want because they give items now. Once you hit level 2, they can give you blade weapons, armor, and bow, uh, but cannot produce e unique and armors, All right, and can't produce unique item. If you upgrade it to the armor, it gives you better armor. It gives you better bow, and better uh, weapons. Um, hmm. So what do we want here? I guess we'll just try to scale our banditry income for now. Okay. And then we can kind of look. We're going to try to basically expand down to the rice paddy and lumber yard. And then also the town. We do we want to keep our units? That's another question. So as you can see, here's the limit uh, when you are recruiting. Okay, and we can't recruit any more of these because we already hit our limit. There's basic units that you have unlimited amount of. I don't see a limit for the White Tiger Raider, which is nice, but we do have a limit for the White Tiger Warriors. Hmm. So these have super high upkeep, 160. And I don't think they're that great. 50 melee base damage. Versus 38 armor piercing plus splash. Okay, what we're going to do is get rid of these boys. Wait. And then we're going to swap these. Okay. And then over here. Do we want, do we have poison arrow on him? No, we have poison arrow on him. Maybe we want a few more of these. Bandit game versus your tribesmen. Let's see. Extra charge. Huh. The range block chance seems so much better. And is a little bit cheaper. So I think what we're going to do is get rid of this one. And then swap that one. And then we're done with our money situation. And the next turn when we have some cash, we'll summon out her. And get rid of her red news. Just for the extra um, poison volley. Oh, we got a new weapon. War Axe. Also Earth Dragon title earned. So War Axe can go on her actually. Oh, and we also should do a um, underling before we recruit this. Right. So she can give us minus 9%, minus 7. Hmm, I can't believe she doesn't have any population growth attached to it. 
did just increase her resolve by a bunch. And none of them have any traits available. Interesting. And they're not going to have any traits available because they're not the Han Empire type. Hmm. Alright, these lower... Uh, so 11%. Builder drops a turn. Alright, she's coming out onto the battlefield. That's fine. This kind of hurts a little bit, but... She's coming to fight, so maybe bring a weapon. Recruitment cost of the army. Oh, uh, we should have. <laughs> we should have put her in and then recruited. My fault. Okay, now we're good. And then we also boost income here. There's a little bit of peasantry. But pretty much that's all we can do because you can't boost banditry. Alright, I think we're good. Um, I'm not spying. Don't have that much money. And we didn't sign a trade agreement in the beginning. That's our fault too. We have Wang Lang, Liu Yao, Xu Gong. We have military non-aggression pack with him. Maybe we can vassalize him. Uh, he's not a great guy, but. Hmm, scholar. Art of war. Okay. I'm just gonna take a moment and look at the other factions as well. Huh, Book of Ceremonies, okay. He has a daughter? <laughs> oh, they get along, what do you know? Who's the, th there's a third faction. Wang Lao, right. Okay. So we're not going for items, we're just going for max money. Ooh, 300. Alright, let's do this. We'll give him a food. There we go. Okay, I think we are... We're good. We have our brother as next in line. We have an underling. Yeah, let's continue. Oh, 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 before we continue, right. So when you capture something and you're inside the settlement, you have, let's say, high uh, loot going on. So you're going to go up to 80 this turn, and you're going to lose some campaign movement range. Uh, what you can do is just pop out, share the spoils. It'll also help boost uh, food and income, which doesn't come up online until next turn, which is a little sad, but um, it does help, and it will help you take down some of that loot. All right. Now we're good. Now we can continue. Alright, Li Jue and Yang Feng declares war. Our economy grows, so discount. Uh, they want us to recruit two more units. Uh, we don't have to rush this. Wooden dog. But we are going to pull out one more unit because we want to add the girl in. Get rid of her retinues. Now it does kind of hurt our economy so that we can't build too much. Despite your economy grows, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to be running our way towards here. We can march and get ourselves into somewhere closer. So we can attack them next turn. Oh, army waiting for us. Sure. So yeah, your loot goes up when you're in uh, enemy territory. It goes down, basically. You get punished if you stay in friendly territory. Right, we can still build something here. Uh, we did talk about how this scales very nicely, especially with three counties. So we're going to focus on banner income here. Uh, we don't really need replenishment at this point. Alright, we're just out of cash. 
And that should be okay, unless we can, you know, sell some stuff. Uh, that's not gonna sell much. What about you? 7.0 for a non-aggression pack. How much do you like us? Only 23. Interesting. Hmm. Well, we're interested in both forms, cash and per turn. Okay, 3.2-ish sounds about right. Then we can get a little bit of cash here so we can build a minor settlement. 525, perfect. Hmm, what do we want here in Xingdu? We might be fighting here. We might be defending that lumber yard. Because this is usually the route that uh, Sun Tzu comes in. I'm fully prepared to lose the town, by the way. I'm not interested in keeping the town. It doesn't fit our playstyle. So, if that's the case, we might go for this one that gives replenishment. And we might be interested in refunding both of these buildings. Uh, we need this one for food right now, which is okay. Uh, but once this, um, once we get like a rice patty, we should be fine. But maybe we'll discount this back. Uh, we'll enjoy it for a bit. When Sun Tzu shows up, we'll, we'll get rid of it. Uh, angry people at us in the court. Um, quite normal. I'm commanding. He's a decent general. We'll keep him. And this is the bandit skill for vanguards. It's not bad either. Here, be happy. Okay, uh, we're good. Let's uh, continue. Okay, Yuan Shu and Liu Chong have declared war on each other. Han Sui has abandoned Ma Teng. So you see, at lower loot, we get 10% campaign movement range bonus. Now, they do have a lot of men, but we have two sets of poison volleys, so we should be good. Uh, let's jump into battle here. Alrighty, so I don't know if they're coming out or we have to go in, but either way, uh, we can wreck them. Uh, we gotta pick basically a nice door with a lot of trees around it so we can sneak our guys in without the towers hitting us, so this would be a great place. Uh, we're gonna hide these guys in the back here. We don't really need units in the beginning. Oh, let's take a look at these units. Um, they're quite unique. You see their weapon? It's kind of like a bamboo pole, and they wrapped... Well, not bamboo. I guess it is metallic. And they wrapped like this blade, a uh, 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 axe blade on top, fitted in, and they caused splash damage, and they're wearing, you know, very rustic clothes. Very cool unit. They will see action, don't worry. It's not like we're going to hide them forever. Uh, but right now, it's a general show in the beginning, when our income is still rather soft. Alright, let's... Which door do we want? This one, okay. Let's go. Now, the enemies are confused, because they don't see any of our generals. So they probably be all clustered in the middle, uh, wherever the flag is. Right, so if we sneak in, run in, go over here, splash some hits into that cluster, it just be very, very high damage. Uh, arrows starting to shoot us. It's fine. We just gotta run in here. Very simple. We got speed on our side. Capture it. Okay, no one is dueling. You can get us started. Shoot at that group. Shoot at this group. Fire, please. And splash it onto the people behind. And if they're not going to charge us, we're just going to stand here for cooldowns. If they do charge us, we will pull back a little bit. She's missing a little health. Let's heal her up. Top her off. Oh, it's everyone. Everyone within range. Oh, I lied. That's even better. That's insane.
right? So very passive yellow turbans. <laughs> very abusive us for using this tactic. But we gotta do what we gotta do. I promise to not use siege weapons this whole campaign. How about that? And we'll have like six sentinels in every battle, <laughs> killing units. Look at that. It's just not fair. Yeah, hide your units so they cluster instead of hide at the, instead of stay at the door. Is that ranged block chance? No, melee evasion. That doesn't help. Uh, we're about to run empty though. Hold on. Does he want to duel? Does he want to duel? Doesn't want to duel. Alright. We'll fight. Brother, you got this. I'll go with a new girl. She has an axe. She can do some damage. Well, not enough. Doesn't kill one per hit. Alright, stay around, brother. Uh, you come back too. Let's call these one. Gotta, got, gotta stick together to heal together. Do we not use it? Don't this, do we have to target? Oh. Oh, we target, but it's everyone around. Because they're, they're missing health. He's not missing health. He doesn't get it. Let's go kill those. I don't know where the other general went. But look at all these dead bodies. Look at all these dead bodies. Alright, too excited, too excited. Go capture this flag. I'll stick with brother in case he needs another healing. Oh, there we go. Good timing. And we won. Uh, let's... Uh, it's okay. He's missing some health. It's fine. Alrighty. So we killed 1345. Some of these are routing troops. But as you can see, we only really shot um, about 500 men together. The rest died of poison. 32 fame and fortune for killing. It's based on casualty. Uh, we're keeping this because it's a county. If we capture a city, we'll gift it over. Once again, we're going to convert. How do we gain another assignment? Is my question. Huh. Yeah, how do we gain another assignment? Win a battle when enemy has twice as many as you. Not so hard. Military Z. So maybe we'll switch you for the Z and then we'll pass the spear to the actual um, vanguard here. 50% hmm, extra speed. Okay. I kind of want to look at the rice patty. Just food. Okay. Not bad either. There's actually no garrison. Hmm, interesting. Alright, we have the money and we have your economy grow, so we definitely want to upgrade as many things as we can. 1600. We're short 300 gold. Maybe we can negotiate our way into 300 gold. Oh, 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 never mind, I lied. We were outlaws, so we were actually low rank. We just ranked up to bandits because we hit enough prestige. So that's why we got another assignment, another uh, underling, and another trade agreement. That makes more sense. Okay. So, in that sense, 
Let's negotiate a trade agreement. 306, 209, so we'll, we'll sign with him. And we want cash up front just because we need to fund our building projects. Well, we have your economy growth discount active. A little bit off what we want, but we can also sell something like this. 45 gold would just be enough. And uh, now we can upgrade this. Perfect. So we got builds going on every commandery. Uh, we have another assignment to keep someone happy. We can spy, I guess. And sight on. These are two spying missions. Um, we can basically do it in commandery that's not ours. Hmm. We can gain visibility. We can. I don't think I need either one, though. That's the thing. Hmm. I guess this will hurt enemy military supply, but it just registered as loot for us. I'm willing to do it just to keep him happy. Give him something to do. We don't have any new characters show up. Uh, Incense Master reduces the cost of recruitment by 10%. It uh, doesn't matter who you put in there. We don't need someone like that right now. Yeah, I think that covers everything. Uh, our loot is going up a little bit, but right now it's a pretty good spot. So we're just going to leave things be. And then we're going to basically go down our way against these last two settlements. Our contract is going super well, so we're likely to see a reward show up soon. Hopefully next turn. Let's go. All right, Liu Bao wants to vassalize us. Uh, no deal. Okay, Yuan Shu declares war on He Yi. No problem. Zheng Jiang declare war on Liu Bu. All right, Liu Yao requests our aid. So he's willing to pay us a bunch of gold and give us financial support, which drops character salary by half and also retinue upkeep by half to declare war on Sun Ce for him, or else we lose 80 point of diplomacy with him. So, um... It's a very tempting deal, but it's also a very dangerous deal because Sun Ce is no joke. Um, we don't need the money. I feel like we can battle Sun Ce on our own term. Um, let him take some of Liu Yao's land first so we can retake them for ourselves. And I want to finish off the Yellow Turbans and get our contract done first. So we're going to bide our time. I don't care about relationship with Louis. These are all our land in the future anyways. It's so tempting, but we're doing pretty good. And we don't really need retinues right now. If we're going to fight Sun Ce, we're going to need retinues. So this just pays for the war. I'd rather not go to war. So there we go. And we got a weapon from our weapon craftsman. More yet. Oh my god. Okay. Aren't we lucky? Um... Hmm. So we're talking about cunning and resolve here. Really, really good weapon. So, uh, hmm. Do we want her to carry this? I guess so. It would increase her expertise by a, a bit. So minus 13% discount. Wow, lucky girl. <laughs> we could even marry her. If we had the cash. <laughs> Alright, we got some new characters. Uh, maybe finally some new official characters from the Han faction, which I, which I think we do. Savant. Okay, so that is another one of um, Bandit backgrounds. Our new faction-wide commerce. Lookout. I think Lookout is an old one from the Han Empire. He's not actually a Bandit. If he was, I would recruit him because we'll get more poison volleys. Thief, so she has more poison volleys, so I think we're gonna recruit her. And she has a lot of satisfaction trait, which is really good. Am I really worried about Yang Feng spying on me? Uh, probably not. She's good. So here's a couple things. So we're gonna recruit her. And I would like to recruit her down the line. 
and make her next in line. I know it sucks for our brother. He can be incense master or master of arms, but we want a commander, right? Because we want the typical commander skill tree. If you look at our bandit commanders, they are terrible. They lost, they have reflexibility and uh, they lost this one. It's now shamelessness. There's no faction support. There's, new, there's no additional assignment and there's no plus one rank. They're all gone. So we want someone for this. Okay. But we did get her. Ah, uh, her skill tree is really, really far away from Poison Volley. We should have... Mm, we should have looked. Right, so we know he's... Lookout is one of the old ones, so that's why he's a Han official. Right, so if we recruit her, we get all the good ones again. And she could also be marriage material. Alright, enough about marriage material. Um... We have one more turn of your economy grows, so let's pop in some buildings here. Uh, I don't think we'll be fighting in Jian'an. Jian'an will be pretty safe on the back side, so we don't need um, preparation camp, uh, no, 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 uh, mustering ground. I don't think we need more food. We're doing pretty good on food, and I don't need discounts for the green ones. Probably just want more income at this point. And we don't have the cash to upgrade either one. Yep, getting expensive. All right, it's slowing us down, so we might want to get rid of some loot. It's hard to go down here. Uh, we might just march over. Right. Swap to march. Keep going. All right. It doesn't matter which one we hit first. Maybe rice patty, just because we can use it better. But this one we can gift it to him. Hmm. Doesn't matter. We'll see. One turn, two turn. Same. This is one's closer, so we'll go with this one first. All right. Awesome items already. New core position. New underlings. We can't fill the underling because we don't have another city. Matter of fact, I don't even think we need to use that many underlings. We need her to level up. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's a long time. In that sense, she's not very useful. Maybe we can send her on assignment. I don't know. Oh, she's still happy with us. We're fine. Um, let's continue as we need more cash. Cao Cao wants to buy our war axe with a non-aggression pack. No deal, man. No deal. Alright, Lu Bu is destroyed. Typical. Uh, that means his characters are available. Oh, only Hou Chen. Okay, we don't really want Hou Chen. He's, uh, he's okay. He betrays Lu Bu down the line. Yeah, I want more bandits. The only Han officials I want are for leadership roles. Alright, Glashy leveled up. I don't really care about the traps. I don't really care. Yeah, I think we just want extra range damage for the army. Poison arrow. Yeah, I think we want to go down this way. So we can... End our turn here. And share some of the spoils so we can get movement back and then we can fight them next turn we have some cash let's grab ourselves that girl and then we can kick our brother down a bit later once she level up a bit so we want her to be leveling here instead of him and we don't need him doing that anymore either we can flush out some of our court to be honest if we're not doing siege weapons, right, then the value of strategists go way down. Like, way down. Like, I don't really see a reason to have them. Especially this guy. So we can save some gold by firing him. He's decent. Just because this new skill is not that bad. He basically has two splash damage skills. And also increase cooldown with the enemy abilities minus morale. So it's good in duels. Pillager is also not bad, and his skills, his traits are also not bad. So we'll keep him. 200 per turn. We might get rid of him. 
because I don't see him getting this skill anytime soon. And ringleader is nice, but his traits are pretty bad. So we're firing two people. Probably could have done it earlier, but it's fine. Uh, if we banish him now, we can actually free up that slot in the assignment right away. Goodbye. So we can have her go level up right away. There we go. Right. Okay. And we can attack them next turn with low loot to recover some of our loot. All right. Like where things are. Let's continue. All right, so Liu Yao here is offering us a military access. access uh, if we pay him, if we, he, we, he'll pay us, uh, which is decent. He doesn't like us anymore because we dropped a bunch uh, because we didn't help him. It's okay. It's his war. He can take care of it. Oh, he's poor. Are you poor? Okay, we'll just take his deal then. Yeah, sure. All right, Cao Cao declare war on Zhang Ba. Sure. All right, we're low loot, uh, as you can see. Satisfaction's hurting, public orders hurting, but we gain scare when we attack, and also 25% campaign movement. Uh, so it's a trade-off here. You gotta balance it. Yes, Don't I worry, we're here to attack now. Uh, what weapon did we get? Or oh, we got Clay Warrior. Um, yeah, our authority is a bit low. That's why the satisfaction issue. But I guess we can give it to her for happiness. <laughs> Alright, we're good. They're not on the field. They don't need that. Let's fight another battle here. Yeah, we'll do buildings afterward. Let's go. Okay, so. Uh, close defeat. They have tons of men. We have tons of poison arrows. We should be okay. But maybe we don't want to fight a city battle. Maybe we want to starve them out. Make them come out to fight us in clump. Let's do that. And we could adapt a few things. I don't see. Oh, Wu Jing is over here. Sun Ce didn't land, huh? His uncle landed. Well, I want these to be leveled up. We need to pop our mission for eight characters on the map. That's what we need to do. Because we're not getting the next set of missions because we only have seven. So we could waste a bit of gold on him. And also keep him happy. Kaija. All right, he can help us boost our income here uh, because he can actually share whatever amount of uh, loot he has on him right away. And we can just recall him back after he runs out and reset a 60. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so we have 2,900. Pop her in. We'll build something next turn. Oh, he should have he should have done in single. Hmm. All right, because we got extra banditry here. Wait, we get extra garrison here. Well, that's cool. Yeah, we're gonna wait a turn for the discounts to kick in. I don't think we need this food anymore, so we're gonna get rid of it and I'm gonna try to build a forge once we level this up. Alright, a lot of things to play around with as bandits. Uh, let's continue. Let's run this episode a little longer. It's fine. This I want. It's a better garrison here. Alright, let's continue. Alright, they're coming out to challenge us, which is great. Exactly what we want to see. Uh, let's start battle. Alrighty. Um, so similar situation. What we're going to do is hide our units on the side. Let our generals take care of the battle for us. Uh, we might want to... I don't really care about the reinforcement, to be honest. Because we want to hit them when they're all clustered together. Let's start. 
Alright. So we want them to group together first before we go poison arrow on them. Those are good units. Uh, not really. Not really. We can just kill them with our generals on cavalry. Alright, no one's dueling. How do they expect to beat us? Like, I would not march out if this was my army. Like, where's the spear unit to kill our general? There's one. And it's a peasant spear. I guess they have good generals? Oh, I guess they do. Okay. Go up really close. And hit this farthest one. So you splash on everyone. Just hit that clump, please. Perfect. Pull back a little. Let them group. Oh, watch the poison do its work. It's like 60 seconds, right? So it's like the entire cooldown. And Yemba, who actually disappears from vision, they don't even know where he is. They see the other two. So we can go we can go frontal with them and then have him on the side. So they give him a nice view. 30 seconds. Alright, we can alter their formation a little bit to favor his shot. Right, look at them, routing from the poison. Alright, they're good. not going to help you. Alright, time to go pull back. We almost cancelled one shot. Actually, hold on. Go away. Uh, that disrupted. It's okay. Better, better to be disrupted than for us to cancel it. I mean, look at this group. How how are they going to stand up to our our? Just our general's charging in. He can just heal. They mend. So we're stronger than they are. And then we're gonna turn around. Run up. Fire. Run up. Fire. Ha! Yeah, they have no shot. They make bandits too strong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're the only one left? Let's get another heal. We'll let them run away. We'll fight the garrison again. Alrighty. Cut off like a thousand of them. Yeah, even though we only killed like 400, not even 400, the rest died of poison. Uh, we captured both, uh, we're going to execute both for their items. Um, we probably want loot because we're kind of low on loot. 330 is not bad given our current income state. Actually, we'll take money. Alright, so uh, we are going to end our episode here. But I think we should trigger one of the missions. Oh, if all these breaking up the High Empire peace deals go through. All right, we got growing might. All right, I wanted to trigger this mission before we take the city because I remember from our preview videos, the next mission takes the town. Right, they want us to hold four settlement, including the town. So we want this mission to trigger before we take the town. We get twenty percent recruitment cost. 
And because we're sieging, we have an option to cause a natural disaster to hurt their supplies and damage their buildings. We're not going to do it because we're about to take it. Okay, and that's where we're going to end our episode. Uh, things are going pretty smoothly. We kind of chicken out of the fight against uh, Sun Ce. He's not even south yet, so I don't think it would have mattered either way. Uh, we're going to test out our theory whether we can just keep summoning him off and on the battle to use his 60 reset supplies to get a boost each turn. It's an alternate assignment in a sense if you think about it because you're boosting 200% uh, food and banditry income every time you summon him out. So every other turn we get this boost in some commandery like this. So it's some op something we're going to try out here. Um, otherwise, uh, it's fine. We're going to wipe out the yellow turban, fulfill our contract. Uh, since our mission requires to keep the town, we're going to keep it. We're going to dump our other, we're going to play hire someone else to, you know, take over as the administrator. Um, may maybe her, uh, but she's on assignment right now, so it could be a little awkward for her. Um, but we could just test things out uh, going forward. Uh, pretty enjoying the bandits so far. Uh, they made it way too strong, so we're going to handicap ourselves and not use any siege weapons uh, going forward. So it will make... Uh, sieging towns a little bit more interesting especially if it's higher level where we can't initiate the fight right away uh, hopefully that makes up for the fact that we are just spamming poison volleys but you guys should have expected that when you guys pick this faction for me um, so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this series and uh, stay tuned for episode two tomorrow see you then bye